Welcome back to Tony and Chelsea Live. It's been two and a half years, Tony, since we did a photo review show. I can't wait to look at people's pictures. We're gonna give you feedback on your actual photos. But first, I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes amazing websites incredibly easy. Get your own private domain, like I use northropphotography.com. Find something perfect for your work. Show off your stills, your videos, your personal projects, whatever it is, the right place to start is squarespace.com slash Chelsea. They get you a trial, no credit card required. Try it out completely free. And if you love it, the coupon code Chelsea gets you 10% off. Get started today. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Let's get started. Let's jump in. Our first picture is from Christian Florin. And if you're familiar with our format, we edit and critique no matter what, because otherwise, what's the point? This is adorable. This pug is so cute, but he's locked behind those bars. I love the story. It's more than just a pet photo. It has a little element of storytelling to it. And yet the eyes are both clear and in focus. Uh, I'm going to try putting it in black and white just to add to the drama. And then I'll up the whites a little bit just to give it some pop. I'm looking at my histogram here to make sure I'm not overexposing. And I'm even going to just pop up the shadows a tiny bit just to show more of his muzzle. I like it. These are just suggestions. Great job, Christian. Do we give our first five stars in a pick? Sure, good one. Oh, I haven't done that in so long. Oh my God. Th Sam, this photo is absolutely amazing. The fog rolling in, the fog over the mountains. I, but can I pick a net? Look at the histogram. Pick He's not net. taking advantage of the whites. I just want to brighten it up a little bit, especially if you're going to make a print out of this, which you absolutely should. You need a white point. You want to take advantage of all the contrast. So set your white points and your black points, sdp.io slash top tip. Even more important if you're printing. But this is such a beautiful moment, and that's what landscape photography is all about. Being there, not at the right spot, but at the right spot with the right light and with the right weather conditions. I also love that this fog in the valley is acting as a leading line, which leads your eye back to the subject, which is this beautifully lit mountain, which I should probably, I don't know the name of it. I should probably know. But this is wonderful. Five stars in a pick. We're starting out generous. 30 <laughs> seconds. How is that? Um, Saksha Agarwal. We have a nice sunset picture here, and you know how it is when you take a sunset picture. You often get so silhouettes. Well. So you can leave it as a silhouette, but I'm seeing a lot of visual distraction here because we're getting the crossing over of the lines from this flagpole and from the tree. So you could, you know, you could edit when you take a picture and crop that out, or you could edit in post and crop that out and simplify the picture a little bit. And then uh, I can see why you kept everything in shadow because I'm seeing a ton of people here. So maybe you wanted to just choose to keep that in shadow. Uh, and maybe I just up the lights a little bit. Um, My suggestion, compositionally, I would find an interesting subject to silhouette. And in this case, we have a lot of interesting subjects because we have these really cool lamps and this steeple here. I would get close, zoom in, isolate one of those as your silhouette and make that your focal point. Yeah, it needs to be really simplified. So you could have even done a shot that was just more like, let me just, sorry, this is. You could simplify it a lot. All right, let's move on. Moises. Um, Moises Cavero. So the color here is pretty amazing. It's a little off level. That's the first thing I noticed. Anytime you're shooting near a horizon, you want to straighten it out or be deliberately off level. But I think this one calls for just being on level. The fog and the lighting are really cool, though. Is that? Oh, there's a hair on our screen. I tried to blame you for that. I want to, I got to scoot closer to you. OK. I can't. Um, for some reason, we got a pretty low quality version of it. I don't know if it's a heavy crop or what, or maybe it's a smartphone picture. Um, but good moment. Keep shooting. I, I like. Right place, right time. I like the composition that it's simplified. Woo! Luis Cubillos. Look at that. I like the color contrast between the yellow. I like that you've got reflections in there. Um, I would probably just take out this little thing because it's distracting. 
Can I make a suggestion? You're shooting this with your Canon. This is the perfect time to have a drone. You know why? Because the drone can get out over the water and fill the frame with what is the focal point here, and that's the boat, while still giving you all that water. So I'd take my DJI drone, fly up close, and then put it in panorama mode and shoot super wide so I could still get all those reflections while having a more prominent subject. Because right now the subject, that's where your eye goes, but it's so far away you kind of wonder what's going on with it? Yeah, I use this little color panel and I'm, I'm uh, brightening up the yellows to get, to enhance the color of the boat and then the reds to enhance the color of the boat again since that's where your eye goes. And yeah, it's interesting. I like, no, don't do that. I like it. Chris Apvall, hello. Hey, Chris, nice to hear from you again. I love the color contrast of the purple and the yellow. That's really nice. Um, I think I'd add some color to the sky. What do you think? Yeah, I, we do need more detail in the sky, and I think working with your RAW file, you could heavily recover those shadows and reduce the noise just in the background. But I do want to see some of that detail, because otherwise so much of the frame is just black and boring. I selected the sky, and then I made it cool because it was uh, really yellowy orange from all the light pollution. And now you're getting some color contrast from that as well. And then we can even yeah, brighten those it. lights. It's been so long since we've done this. We have the new version of Lightroom that can select sky and stuff. I so know. much more power. Remember I used to have to just try to make people imagine it and now it's just so much easier. So let's look at the before and after and you just get a little more color contrast there. Cool, I like it. All right, see a cityscape by Leah Dixon. Lee Dixon, yeah. Oh, Lee, sorry. Um, Four-second exposure, so we have a lot of interesting movement in it, which definitely makes it much more interesting. The sky and the colors here are just amazing. It looks like the world might be ending. I'm not sure. It looks like a carnival, but again, hold on, let me go back. Do you see your histogram here, how this whole right portion of the histogram, there's nothing going on there? That means that it's not, the exposure is a little bit low, so we could go into the whites and we could pop those whites quite a bit. Yeah. And then look how much brighter that looks already. And it matches the theme, right? This is so bright and fun and exciting looking. Great, Great picture. Work. Marco Traniello. Oh, hey, Marco. This is beautiful. I love this candy lip thing. I've seen this before, but I can tell it's difficult to do because it often looks messy. And this looks nice and neat. Her makeup is perfect. I love how you expose the photo. And I even like that you added it, you made it a little more interesting by having her lick the corner of her mouth. It added some motion, some movement, and it made it different. So I think that's really cool. One minor suggestion, I'm a little bothered with the crop, how it goes right through the bottom of her eyes. It makes it a little spooky for me. I'd either like to see her entire eyes or crop down closer to her nose, but just watch the edges of your frame. I wanna see if that, cause I kinda like it. I, oh, I remember now, we used to disagree all the time. Um, well, I think I'd rather see more eyes. More eyes? But what I don't like is just that. It's me. I would put up the whites just a little bit too because you can see your histogram is just a little to the left and that just brightens it, which I think matches this fun candy theme. I'm giving that a five star in a pick. Oh yeah, five stars in a pick. A beautiful shot. Ooh, oh, Jason mood, Miller. Jason. Jason Miller was in a spooky location. I love that this is so moody and you can do so much with it. I know we hid this panel, but this is where my um, presets are. And I know people hate on presets, but I actually use mine all the time, but they're not in Tony's computer. So I'm wondering, do you hate me? Because the, the studio computer is not my day-to-day -day computer. Oh, I you're totally right. have your presets. You can get them at Northrop.photo if you want them. But the fog here is what really makes this shot interesting. And once you find a spot like this, just revisit it over and over and over again. I have spots that I've visited more than a hundred times because it's always going to be a little bit different. And at some point, you're going to get a great shot like this. I'm doing some color grading to make it interesting. And it's kind of a spooky mood, so I'm going to cool it off a little bit. And then we can also lower the vibrance. And now you went from like just under here to like under here but spooky and you could or you could go black and white and accentuate the form instead of the colors and I think I'm actually liking this even more and I'm gonna pop the whites again that's like the theme this is my new thing I think cropping was our old thing now popping the whites is 
us, 2022. So here we have what looks like maybe Abby. a candid shot. Is you think it's street photography? Um, sure. This mixed lighting so difficult, right? Because you're getting all different colors. It looks like you might have fluorescent lighting. You have this overhead lighting here, and that can be really tough. What I generally do is expose for the people because they look a little bit bright. I'm actually going to pull down the highlights a little bit because you're getting some really like bright specular highlights on their faces. And then I think you could even crop here because uh, there's a lot of distracting elements. So let's go 8 by 10 and then you know where the, all, all the action in the shot is? Between these cuties between these two cuties. And if this is street photography, one of the most uncomfortable but important parts of street photography is getting close to your subjects, get close and shoot wide. And you're a little far back and it feels a little voyeuristic. So you have to overcome that shyness and get close and snap a picture. And you did that with an iPhone. And that's kind of the perfect camera because it is so discreet and people don't think much about it. Talking about getting up close. Yeah, this is a good example. So here we are at 35 millimeters and nice and close and you can see they're filling the frame with the subject and it feels much more intimate. I'm actually going to crop more because this guy in, in the frame is distracting. I mean so is Spider-Man, just red has a lot of visual weight so we could even crop him out unless you want it to be a part of the story because obviously she's at a convention but that wasn't a really good crop, I'm going to be honest. So th this is also a time for the use of shallow depth of field because you have a cluttered background and you're at 35 f1.8 that's going to give you good background blur which you've got but mm, you spring for that canon 50 f1.2 could be just a little bit better here's a woman just in some flowers i like this shot a lot me this too. feels Chris cinematic to me part of it is the crop but i think part of it is the grading too um, skin tones are a little bit green picking it up off the grasses are you do you like that or no i like uh, you know what this is just me. Everyone has a different preference. If it's natural lighting environment and there's no reason for her to have abnormally colored skin, I edit for the skin and skin tone is one of the first things I go for. So I like to zoom right in on my subject and check out their skin tones and I added magenta because she was really green before and I don't want her to be too pink and then you can play around with adding some orangey color or if you should go blue and now you can see the before and after. She has a more natural skin tone. And then I think I would even crop it because that's kind of what's up today. I'm giving Chris a five stars and a pick. I really like this shot. Chris. The model has a good pose, a she good does. attitude, great makeup and outfit. It all came together. I love the location too. All right, let's do the five P. Ooh, we got some panning. Great shot, Trad. Trad. You're at 1 of a second, which that means that car is hauling if you get that much blur and it looks like incredibly sharp um, this is great I actually wish it was a little bit wider because it's just a little bit close especially to the front and you could fix this in Photoshop if you go in there expand the canvas and then use content aware fill then you can fix that and also just shoot a little bit you're at 200 millimeters on a 200 600 so you couldn't go wider with your camera I added a little more contrast by raising the whites here, lowering the blacks. We've talked before about the right side of the histogram being empty, but you can see the blue, which is the color of the car, is there. So I think that if we went too far to the right, it would overexpose, and yeah, it does. So the exposure looks good to me. Maybe actually just to smell us. Maybe just the whites. I did the whites up no. and the blacks down to add a little contrast and to pop the whites. Well, let's go. Chris Overholster. I love seeing these familiar names. Um, you were a calendar winner, like, congratulations, first of all. I love these fall colors, they're beautiful. Yeah, they really are. The focal point with the two kayakers in the foreground. And the kayaks are fall colors? Like, did you hire these people? Are you kidding me? I can make a suggestion just looking at the settings. You're at 1 320th in ISO 500, but you have a stabilized lens. Let's get the ISO down to ISO 100 so that you're going to get the cleanest possible images, the best possible colors. And then put it in continuous and rattle off a few shots just to make sure that it's nice and steady. Your, your shutter speed, it's going to drop down to like 1 100th, 1 80th, but you can totally handhold that at 260 millimeters. I promise, just take a few shots. What I did here to this beautiful photo is I just up the contrast. Of course, I popped the whites. That's the theme of this show. And it just 
it just made the colors a little bit more vibrant. All right. Oh, Jake Valden, I love gorgeous. this composition. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. You have so much depth in this photo because you have this foreground that's out of focus. You have your subject peeking up through the grasses and you use the grasses to eliminate distractions. So smart. You have this beautiful background and then the details in the clouds. I love this. This is five stars in a pick. But, but. Do you want those grasses to be in focus, or are you happy that they're blurred that much? I'm happy that they're blurred that much. Okay, see, I would have gone with a higher f-stop. Well, sometimes even good people are wrong. <laughs> what, what can I say? Okay, here, you cannot decide in the moment, because you're trying to view it on this little screen. You don't know. What I do is I sh would shoot at wide open, and then I'd shoot at f8, and I'd shoot at f16. You give yourself I would choices? Get everything when I'm in a beautiful situation. Maybe he like did. This. And if you did, maybe you chose this one out of I the others. I think you did. I would also always get some shots at the base ISO because you're at ISO 400. Drop that down. You have an image stabilized lens. Just take a bunch of shots to make sure that some are sharp and get your safety shot at ISO 400 fine, but also shoot at the base ISO. It's like, I also pop the whites a little bit here, but you can barely tell. Especially it's... for printmaking, you've got to have white points in it. This is so beautiful. And I love your post-processing. It's like a little bit cool and muted, and yeah. it just makes me feel cold. You really created a story here. Five stars in a pick. Eric Gruss, what's up? How are you? How have you been? I hope you're well. I like this tree. Um, I love the color contrast between the blue and the green. I think that's really beautiful. And I like this line in the road. I think in the post-processing, something's a little weird to me. And I think it might be because you darken the sky a little bit too much. So let's try something here. Let's brighten it a little bit. And I know you wanted it like a blue, so we can still keep that. I think this is such a nice spot, such a beautiful tree, that I would continue to revisit this every day, every season, every if it's minute close to you. of your life. Um, especially because I find the road to be so distracting here. Now, there are a few ways you could handle this. You could put something interesting there, like a, a car broken down with the hood open, or a suitcase, or a person walking through. You could wait until just after a rain, when the road is going to be nice and shiny and reflective. That's interesting. You could go there on a foggy day. Maybe if there's like a low rolling mm -hmm. fog, it would help hide it. or after a fresh snow, this would be a beautiful spot to visit. So, great spot. If Keep it snows back. here. Okay. Sorry, I have fun editing. Oh. oh what is this monster? Zark Muckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be his true name. <laughs> that made me laugh. What is this? This is a perfect shot. I mean, like, it makes me really uncomfortable, so I'm going to keep going. Something about it. But right settings, 25 hundredth of a second. Great shot. This is amazing. Um, I feel like there's too much negative space over top of it. So I might adjust the composition a little bit. But I like the color contrast between the orange and the blue. Yeah. I like the negative space. <gasps> Deb Mundinger, this is gorgeous processing. Mm -hmm. I love the teal with the orange. Really good color choices there. That's beautiful. Uh, I like that you chose a long exposure, this leading line of the water. The sharpness of the rocks versus the softness of the water you created with the long exposure. I like all of your choices. I just really love this. I'm giving it five stars on a pick. Yeah, good work, Deb. Y'all have improved since we last reviewed your photos. Uh, Olga, this is a beautiful owl. Yeah, it is. I'm going to crop it. Oh, but I want to uncrop it because, see, the tail of the owl is just cropped in a little bit and I'm uncomfortable with that. You have to just always check the edges of your frame. But I know, especially in wildlife photography, I get too excited and I just start snapping photos. But snap a few photos, but then take a breath. Check the edges of the frame, check the composition. Now, this is a still owl. They do not move much, but you're at 1 800th of a second, and that is forcing your camera to shoot at ISO 640. You would get so much cleaner, sharper, more detailed images if you get that shutter speed down because the ISO will drop down too. So this, at 300 millimeters, you could totally shoot this at 1 60th of a second and ISO 100. Use the rule of doubles. Snap off some shots at 1 800th, and then go to 1 400th, snap off a few shots, go to 1 200th, snap off a few shots, and just keep dropping. And I promise that will produce better images for you. 
I just went in, I cropped it, I selected the subject and it selected the owl, I upped the whites to brighten this up a little bit, then I selected the subject and selected the inverse and um, lowered like the shadows and stuff in the background to just give it more subject separation and uh, I like it. Great job, Olga. I think we did a little teamwork there, Olga. I like what you did. <gasps> Sushil, this is a beautiful, simple part of nature. I like the color contrast between the magenta and the green. I like the negative space. I love the simple beauty of nature. I want to fill the frame a little bit more. Oh. Yeah, I... You're I, really stepping on my vibe. The negative space, okay, but don't you think... We like it. Let's not overthink it, Tony. How do so you feel? So Shay, my first, my eyes first go to the bikes and the arrows in the bike lane. But I'm kind of not paid off because it makes me look around for a bike and then I just, I find myself looking for a focal point that isn't really there. So I think this is a really cool spot and I love the lines in it. But I would wait until an interesting cyclist came through and if possible, maybe even wait until the sun is low in the sky and you just get sort of long shadows cast by a cyclist. Take some time and explore it. Maybe even recompose it a little bit to get rid of the cars that are in the left part of the frame because I find that to be a distraction from the overall simplicity and geometry of the photo. I like that you went for using the geometry of the cityscape to create a photo and a cool pattern. And I think that's really cool. Um, it's abstracted because you did that and I like that, but I do think that the car is kind of just like, boom, my eye goes to that car and it's not really the subject of the photo, so I would crop that out or um, you could even just like use this, but actually I don't really like doing this, so let's see. I mean, it just doesn't really go well. This is more of a Photoshop thing for me and that's why Okay, good job. You get the idea. Good job, me. Oh yeah, great job, Lightroom. Oh, I'm an expert. Okay. Well, that was humiliating. Okay, let's look at this. This is a, a graveyard. spooky graveyard photo by Corey. I like that her styling matches the location. So you didn't go there in like a bright prom dress. You you went in all black, thigh high boots, fishnet stockings, blue hair. You have this whole mood going that matches the theme. Um, and I like that. Um, but I want to take the mood a little bit further. Her expression doesn't mm -hmm. really say spooky graveyard setting. And the, the, the weather also doesn't say that. Like a nice fog would be good here and match her mood a little bit. She's just got like kind of a sassy pose with her hand on her hip. Doesn't you want her to be like a ghost? Or just something a little spookier. Okay. Woo! Oh, Ivan, my God, this is amazing. Wow. Oh, we're supposed to go see the Aurora Borealis next year. This is beautiful. Yeah. Was it next year or this? No, next year. What am I supposed to say? I don't know. He nailed it. I will wait. We can't right. just say he nailed it. People come here to be ripped apart and challenged. Maybe the reflections. Maybe if there was like an elk, some kind of <laughs> yeah, some fish jumping out, dolphins. Dolphins. Oh, oh! I love the conflict here. I immediately I know they're fighting. He's like, "Whoa, guys, calm down!" And he's like, "Don't touch my." What is that, man? Yeah, that's great. So can I tell you what Jeffrey did right here? Jeffrey C. He got low to the ground. He must have the camera right on the ground because that gives us the background there. Otherwise, we'd just be looking down on it. And, it, oh my God, he's only at 70 millimeters. So what is, these birds are so distracted. They let Jeffrey, probably crawling on his belly, get so close. And that's what made this picture possible. Great job, Jeffrey. I even like that you left the island and everything in there. I was tempted to crop it, but I'm happy with it. A suggestion. <laughs> You're at uh, 1 6400th of a second. You could have gone a little slower and gotten a little more depth of field out of it. And that would have produced a little bit sharper results. Oh, wait, was there some editing going on here? I did things. We no. Oh. We don't need to talk about it. I love the expressions. Very cute. <gasps> Victor. Beautiful, simple songbird photo. This is exactly what I like. Um, perch bird, 
you can shoot this easily at one two fiftieth of a second, if not one one hundredth of a second. Again, use the rule of doubles, and that'll get that ISO down, and that'll produce so much cleaner images. But, I mean, overall, it's beautiful, especially for ISO 4000. Like, it, it looks fantastic. Yeah, I selected the subject, and I'm just making the subject a little bit brighter, and I made the background a little bit darker, and then we just get a little more subject separation there. Thomas Stephen, very cute. Um, one thing is the little baby's eyes are blocked by the ear, and I can't see all of their faces. So I think it might be a little more impactful if we could see the eye, because that's the part that my eye goes to. And you're using the 800 f11, great lens, but you have to be sure to use the slowest possible shutter speed at all times. I keep saying this again and again. So you could definitely shoot at 1 250th of a second, because it has amazing stabilization, and that would let drop the ISO down, give you cleaner images. I like seeing the animal's form with black and white. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, I think that works. Ooh, Ooh great this is panning cool. shot, Nicolo. And uh, the, the car is so cool. You have a person looking out the window. Great job. Like, I, I bet Nicolo must have taken a thousand shots to get this. I, I, I don't want to say any... Nicolo. Is that right? Nicolo? Nicolo. He's got an accent. Nicolo. Andrew, oh, this is, I like the color contrast. I wish I could see this person's face. Do they have a face? No. I don't know. It's kind of mysterious. Uh, I like it. 50 F12. I, like I like the mood. I wish I could see a little tiny sliver of face. Uh, Chris Clark, this is a nice location. I like that. I like her hair color with the graffiti. I like her expression. Uh, one tough thing is like bra straps are distracting when a bra strap is showing it kind of it kind of changes the the vibe of the outfit a little bit so I would have probably because this looks like a nice velvety um, what is satin dress which is kind of dressy so I would have probably made sure the bra strap wasn't showing but that's a styling thing um, I like the light and everything that looks nice yeah, and I think her expression and pose match the setting well. You did that right, Chris. You know what else is nice? When you have a beautiful photo and you share it, and it doesn't just get pushed to the bottom of someone's feed. Right. And that's why I like having a Squarespace website, because I can put my favorite work in a place where that's what people see, and they're not seeing my worst photo or just the most recent photo. They're seeing my favorites. They can go to my about page. They can learn about me. They can learn how to contact me. They can go to my gallery. They can go to my store. And if you want your very own Squarespace website, you can get one for free for 14 days. Set it up. Drag your favorite photos in. Set up a place where people can buy prints. You're going to love it. And you can save 10% if you use the coupon code CHELSEA. So go to squarespace.com slash CHELSEA. Use the coupon code CHELSEA. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Thank you. Thanks, Squarespace. Do you see how smooth I am? Yeah, people didn't even know that people was coming. People didn't even know. They were like, where's she going with this? You know, and that's... Eric Hermanson, nice to see you again. This is such a beautiful scene. Yeah, um, it really is. Though I, I kind of want to suggest picking something for the foreground subject because I feel like the foreground's actually too busy. Maybe one of those good. buildings. Yeah, and then get closer to that and use the Aurora Borealis as a background. I just, I think, I think it's too much foreground. What if he just cheated and he just? Are you against this, Eric? If we just took out some of the. Sure, do get rid of that. I don't know what's happening now. They put the water there. Okay. Anyway, that's our suggestion: is just simplify the <laughs> foreground composition a little bit. I like the colors. I like the mood. It feels very. Uh, warm and dreamy. I don't know what he's doing though. I wish he was diving in or just a little more interesting of a moment and also he's dead center and I kind of wish he was near the bottom of the frame and we could see a little bit more of the sky so it just felt a little more grounded. But, but I like that they have the sand too so that's a tough one. They're at 85. Hmm. I like it though. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh Adam. Beautiful. That wow. Is so that pretty. is so detailed. And look at that. Adam nailed the shutter speed. To get a sharp shot at 1 500th <laughs> is definitely a challenge. I hate when you go to lower. It's probably because it's a JPEG. Yeah, but. it's a JPEG. But, I mean, so sharp. 
Yeah, and really out beautiful. Of a 350 millimeter lens. You must have been really close, Adam. Great work. Really five good stars. work. Oh yeah, five stars. More in. Uh, I love shooting concerts because they do such a great job with the lighting. It's mm. like they do most of the work for you. Yeah, the smoke, the mood. They're always doing something interesting. But the, but the challenge is you have to be there and you have to get access, right? You have to get access to right up close and in the front. And I think this is a, such a cool shot with the lighting. I kind of wish she was doing something, singing, but she's posing really nicely. Yeah. Great okay. job. Uh, Hari, I like the... The beautiful sunset. Uh, I can see that the boat is the subject here. The subject is this boat, but it's a little in shadow. So let's see if we can fix it in post. Not fix it, but improve it. Like maybe add a little more light. That looks a little unnatural. Yeah, I don't know how you shot this, but this is definitely a shot that needs to be bracketed. So bracket it and then bring it in and process it with high dynamic range techniques so you can get cleaner images in the foreground. I This is another use for a drone. I'm not sure what you shot this with, but I would um, like to get even closer to it and get a little lower too because right now the line of the boat perfectly matches the horizon and that means it's not set off in the background, but if you could just be a little bit lower then it would break the line of the horizon and add depth to the photo. Cool. <gasps> Ooh. Beautiful Rachel. European robin. Oh, he's so cute. Wow, Look how much so detail. Sharp. I love it. And at only 300 millimeters. I give you a pick. And so like a candid shot, uh, yeah. 50 millimeters, tons of background blur. I, I think it's cool. I think this is a nice moment. If I went out with friends and I got this picture, I'd be so happy to document that. So I, th I like this one. William, what's up? We got a really dramatic leading line down the center. It's dead center and we have these converging lines bringing us to a roof. So I think I would uh, either move down so that the leading line went to something, oh, but you have like... The mountains are so gorgeous. The mountains the are beautiful. The sky is so gorgeous. I wonder if you could get a Go little ahead. bit lower so those buildings would be obscured by the vegetation. Uh, I would just... Yeah, just Photoshop it. Great idea. Uh, it's so bad at selecting the source. Your red ISO 1600 and 1 3200th of a second. I would drop that down to ISO 100. Try to be at the base ISO whenever possible. That's a crummy edit, but now you can see the leading eye, uh, line leads to the mountains instead of the building, which was unattractive. So if you're okay with making edits like that, I'm okay with it. What's up? Mm. Nice close-up shot of a lion. Nice detail. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Again, get that shutter speed down. I mean, maybe it's just me. I like it in black and white. Yeah, I like it in black and white, too. Jason Graves. Another familiar name. I love the color contrast here. I think I'd go in, the sky is so dramatic, I think I'd select the sky and then uh, bring down the highlights a little bit to bring a little texture in, bring down the blacks, bring up the white a little bit, and then, uh, let's see, yeah. I think the composition could be improved because the focal point is the red barn, of course, and it's just dead center. And then we have this other barn that's just sort of imbalanced. And I don't find a balance between the two. I think I might be happier if the red barn were closer to the right edge of the frame. And I might not, I might prefer without that other barn entirely. So, I mean, it'd be better at the time to just move closer to the barn, fill the frame a little bit, and then maybe position it with the rule of thirds on the lower right corner. Like that? Yeah, and if maybe you can't cross that field again, like drones are super useful for this to be able to get out wow. over to the field and change your position. I, I like this shot a lot. I give it a pick. Uh, Annie Sheila, I miss you. Oh, yeah, amazing shot. This is amazing. I love the makeup, the styling. This is a bold, different expression. It's not just her having a blank, pretty expression. It's a little bit like in your face. And I like the high key background. I think that's really cool. Yeah, this shot. Uh, 
It's perfect. I, I don't have anything I to see. say about it. I was going to try to see Anu Sheila in the eye, but I can't. <laughs> Five stars and a pick. Absolutely. Beautiful shot. Jeffrey Collins. This is a crab? Just kidding. It's a spider. Um, I, I kind of wish that we got it this orange over the green so that we had those contrasting colors. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. Those are spooky little guys. This is very seasonal. Wow. Scott. Is this Scotty? I think so. It reminds me of his work. I love the colors, the blue with the orange tones in the bird, the halfy and fish, the dramatic pose, the motion. And the lighting, right? And the it's lighting, of course. It's all about the lighting here. Yeah. And the fact that it caught his eye just perfectly. And you must have taken thousands of pictures to get one that was so nicely lit. Great one. Five stars in a pick. Yeah, no suggestion there. Saul. Oh, I just wish he was turning his head a little bit towards us. I want to see a little bit more of his eyes. Oh, I do <laughs> like it in black and white. I think I would just like neutralize the color a little bit because it's a little blue. And I like just this totally neutral white with that little sliver of pink ear and nose. That's so cute. I give you five stars and a pick too. Y'all are so talented. Saul, that's your second picture. We got a one picture rule. Oh. <gasps> Where'd you find this sad monkey? Why is it so sad? Oh. It's so cute. I would raise the exposure. It's underexposed a little bit because your camera got tricked by the bright background there. See, right away, so much better. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a really interesting moment. I might even fill the frame with his face a little bit more. I That's don't know what that I was the Let's see if it works. Really I like helps. I kind of like the extended hand, but let's just try a crop. Yeah. Just for old time's sake. Get both of them and again like strive to use a slow shutter speed. Oh. I bet you could have shot that at one thirty and two one hundred. This is too devastating. I need therapy now. Yeah. Eric, we have a A food picture here. I'm having flashbacks of the show when it was at five o'clock and everyone would send in food <laughs> pictures and my stomach would just be growling. Wait, what ti what time is it? It's four thirty seven. Okay. I'm hungry. Um, I'm bothered by the balance of it because it's not quite centered, and I think with food photos, you kind of want to fill the f more of the frame with the food. I do like that we can see some of the plate, because the color of the plate is beautiful, and the wood on the table is beautiful. Like, include those, yeah, but I still make the most of the I love the colors, this beautiful, I think this is salmon with this blue plate and the, cr like, fresh green-looking cucumber. I, I like it. I think yeah, he did a great job. Oh, oh he is adorable. <laughs> That's a, such a cute shot, Jeff. I mean, it's oh all God. about the subject, right? It's all about the subject. And it doesn't matter if this was taken with a smartphone or what, because it's so cute. But you nailed focus on the eye. Uh, you watch the edges of the frame. I, I think it's just adorable. It's perfect. It's so cute. I give it five stars and a pick. And I love that puppy dog. Martin. Ooh, I like that you have a little stuff in the foreground. I like that, too. Um, I think you could crop it a little. I'm taking over your old job as the cropper. Hmm. It's better. Trust me. We could go into the blues here. We could do a little work with that. We could either bring the luminance down. We could bring the saturation up. Get that ISO down. You're at ISO 200. No need for that. Ooh, oh, this is Kieran. Kieran. Yeah, gorgeous. Oh, Absolutely gorgeous. Mood the mood, for the days. Colors. Of course, five stars in a pick. Yeah, there's perfect. Make a huge print out of it. Absolutely perfect. Ooh, what about this clippy part? Let's see what happens. Just add a little, like a little, like. Mm, yeah, when you make the print, you want a white point. I like the action. I like the expressions, but uh, your shutter speed is a little slow because I think we're getting some movement, or is it the? Is it just that he's far away? What's happening here? I also feel like it's an awkward moment because his hand is behind his body. And if I can make a suggestion, get as close to the field as possible. Like, try to get sideline access so that you're lower eye level with them instead of looking down. And that way you'll have more depth. It's going to be tough. All these things that we have to do as photographers. Now we have to talk to people. Like, that's the reason why we're photographers, right? Mm -hmm. James Bennett, I like that you found this alley and then you found people to fill it to give me a little place for my eyes to rest. I think it's beautiful. Great work. Okay, very similar, but he got closer to the subjects, filled the frame with them. The background is not that interesting. We can't see the subjects. So I think it's sort of a beautiful cityscape in the background, but we just see like corrugated metal. I think it's interesting. I like the textures, the shadows. I think 
it's a different. I like that. Nico. Okay, so we have a portrait here. It's very bright. Yeah, very let's kind look. Of high key. Everything is to the right. So let's expose for the face. That's what I like to do. And we'll bring down the exposure. And uh, you know what else you can do? You can choose a luminance range. We don't need to talk about it. And then you can change it here to be more or less like this. So this shirt's a little overexposed. And then you can bring down the highlights if you wanted to do something like that. Now, he's got a little bit of raccoon eyes. It looks like it's an overcast day and his eyes are just in shadow. A little bit of flash always helps. Whenever we go to take pictures of somebody, we always bring a flash just in case. A little pop, give him a little catch light. You wouldn't even know it was taken with a flash, but I promise it will help. Also, again, use that base ISO on your camera. We just kind of like brought his skin tones down a little, but I like, I like the whole feeling of the picture. Look at Daryl got this beautiful sunset scene. Yeah, it's just glowing. I love the sort of monochromatic nature of it. Pretty. Nice composition. Great job. Where are you, Simone? It's on a pirate ship. Oh my god. I love uh, the candlelight, the moodiness. I, I'm already asking questions, right? I'm not even critiquing. I'm just interested. His facial expression is like, he's really intense. Uh, this guy is up to something and has interesting makeup. I think the only thing is that I would change the crop a little just to get, there's nothing going on in the bottom, so this just lets me focus on his face a little bit more. I would get closer, get a little more intimate, interact with the people a little bit, and experiment with dragging the shutter too. Show a little bit of motion, just make it a little bit more interesting. Very cool. Ooh! Whoa. Great job, Peter. Um, I wish we had a little more space above the building, but you could fix that in Photoshop by just extending the canvas Five stars. a little bit, but and fantastic okay. work, yeah. Okay. Oh, Sean. These guys are so difficult to not overexpose. Yeah. So what you do when you're taking pictures of white birds is put down your exposure compensation so that you're exposing for your subject and everything around the white bird might be underexposed, but that's okay. You just don't want to clip the highlights, which I don't think you did. And you want the sun behind you. He's backlit, which means we don't see any light in his eye. You also want him coming towards you, which these egrets never do. They hate us, so they just fly away all the time. But you just have to keep shooting until you get them coming at you. So if you expose for the subject, then you can get the background a little darker and you get that subject separation. So just think about that, but I like your picture. Chris, woo, where are you? Wow, this is so detailed. There's so much in here. Oh, this is cool. It yeah. almost looks like an old drawing or painting or something. I think this would be a great print on somebody's wall, especially as a memory of a location. That's cool. Ooh, Joseph, I love the expression you got. It's, mm. It feels genuine. I, I feel like you got a genuine moment here. Yeah, so peaceful. And uh, the color contrast is really beautiful. Just very wonderful. Great work. This is Jordan's... What is this lonely vulture? Oh, is this a condor? It looks like a condor to me. Whoa! He's that's clearly very been cool. Very carefully tracked, <laughs> poor guy. He's an R5, so he's a Canon condor. Very cool. Hey, you've got some interesting lines. I like the colors, but let's see. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, it, but I, I would love oh, to see crane. a focal point. <gasps> Have someone in like a red dress leaning over the railing. You think Paul Crane is gonna go find a lady <laughs> in a red dress? Yeah. I like it, and I think it works well in color, too. I, I just think this is interesting. I like that you found beauty in finding an unusual angle. Very cool. Ruby Inferno. I like that you are appreciating the leaves. I think that you could have found a more interesting background for them, but very cool. Don Lambert. Oh, we need more depth of field, and we need to focus a little bit closer. Oh, we have a video we just made about macro photography, so... You should check that out, but I love the color contrast between the yellow and the purple. That's beautiful. I like your composition. It's just not in focus or the focus. Yeah, you want to be at like f16. It might this. be just like a sliver, it's so it's hard. Oh, oh, it's little. right there. Yeah. Okay. It is in focus. It's just not where people look. So you probably would have wanted it here. Yeah. Look at this stump. Oh, that's beautiful. I. Stump. I really like this. I think this is one of those spots that you revisit over and over again. But this is beautiful. I'm moving along because Donnie. Donnie. This is great. I love the leading line of the dumbbells in the foreground. 
just the right amount of depth of field. Uh, great pose. Maybe cropped a little weird at the top. Like, but I like the outfit, the location, the mood, the expression, all lighting, really wonderful. Yeah, but uh, we're loading here, so I can't tell if it's in focus, but I'm going to just trust you and say that it is. Tony, I think we got to call it. I think we could be here all day. Okay, that's all we could get if to. If people huh? like this, maybe we'll do another one. We'll see. But thank you so much for submitting your photos. Thank you, Squarespace, for making this possible. If you want a place to show off your photos, you need a Squarespace portfolio. So go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. And maybe we'll do this again. All right, let us know if you want more in the comments. Bye. Bye. It was nice seeing you.